coming and sharing in this experience at this time. My name is Neil Brewer. I'm the Auxiliary Commander of the Local Chapter 125 here in Powell. I'm also a member of the Connect 5 Veterans Foundation, which helped to fund this event. I'd like to, at this time, have you all stand as the colors are presented. Everyone looking at the flag, then uh, I'd like to have announce uh, Sue Eshelman, and she will be leading us in the national anthem. And uh, following that, we'll have the pledge of the flag, which will be led by Commander Mark Kovac from Chapter 125 of the Disabled American Vets. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the love's burst. JT Ramales come up and provide us with an invocation. Almighty God, creator and sustainer of all life, who has received in the eternal care the gift of the lives we today honor, we who are veterans of the Vietnam War often think of our brothers and sisters whose names are engraved upon the black granite of the wall, and we honor with respect and thanks the great sacrifices made by those who were engaged in other wars, actions, conflicts, and missions while serving our nation and its people. We miss them. We will not forget them. We pray for their families and friends, those who were left to their losses, and we ask that they may be comforted by the knowledge of our support and our tears. We pledge to them through you that their sacrifices will be remembered and that to honor them, we will work diligently for peace so that our children might know a world without war. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'd just like to take a second right now and, uh, well, it's going to take more than a second, but uh, I would just briefly introduce some of the major people that have made this possible. 
I'd like to uh, announce Sandy Miller, who is with the UAW APMC Michigan Industrial Labor and Management Fund. She's the director. She's the one that got this wall here. She's our major sponsor and has made this possible. Sandy, could you stand up? The next group, so I'll just go more quickly. I'd like to say thank you to the Livingston County Board of Commissioners who have been wholly behind this project as a whole. If you're sitting out the audience, please raise your hand so that we can know who you are. Thank you. We're also blessed with the Livingston County Airport Commission who allowed us to use this facility. And uh, those that are here, if you would raise your hands. Thank you. We had a awesome escort on Tuesday. It was provided with the direction of the Livingston County Sheriff's Department. And I'd like to thank all the sheriff's deputies that helped with that, including the battery's out. The battery out. Livingston County Undersheriff, Mr. Porter, Lieutenant Nats, I'd like to thank you personally. Thank you guys. You provided an awesome effort for the state. All of the people from the cities and counties that were around us from Livingston County all showed up. We lined Grand River and we brought these heroes home to welcome them as very deserving. that I'd like to thank was Lena Seitz, our state representative, Hank Popple, state representative, Pan McGonigal, president of the Brighton Chamber of Commerce, who's been instrumental in helping us to make everyone know what's going on, and a person that we couldn't do without. Nancy Johnson, would you please stand up so we can recognize you? Nancy is our webmaster. We can't thank you enough. We also have present the Michigan Traveling Log, the biggest development that came with that and helped bring it in. We also have Jerry Lindquist, who brought the uh, museum in the back. So, again, and uh, one other person I'd like to introduce right now, just briefly, so that uh, we know who she is, I'll have her come up later, is Marty Eddy with the POW MIA. And the National League of POW MIA Families. National League of POW MIA Families. This lady does an awesome job of chasing people and chasing names. She's going to come up in a few minutes and just say a brief message to you, but I want to share that because, again, it's another individual that's been involved. In. At this time, I'd like to have Don Parker the chairperson of the Livingston County Board of Commissioners, 
come forward, say just a couple of quick introductions from on the basis and information from the county. Again, I can't say enough about how great the county has been and the Board of Commissioners. Every place I go, most every community I go to says, our county commissioners aren't like this. So, John, thank you. I guess you'll have to yell. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Can you hear me in the back? Uh, raise your hand. Excellent. Tell them don't walk Excellent. away. Well, I'm Don Parker, as Dale mentioned. I'm the chairman of your board of commissioners. And I, first of all, let's give our hand to Dale. He's been yes. a tireless worker. Yes. And all those involved, I stood outside my office on Tuesday with the procession. I've never seen anything like it. It was an absolutely a moment none of us will forget. And I just want to say, as, as we welcome you, this is usually, as you can see, of course, an airport. But for the next couple of days, it's going to be more than that. It's very, going to be a very special time. And these names, etched in stone, really represent the best of America. It represents, really, why I'm able to speak in front of you, because we are free, and we're free because of the men and women who are, whose names are engraved on this wall. And it's just not about the people, the great service personnel of Vietnam. Behind those names, are also the names, just not of those who fell at Pleiku, or Doc To, or Khe San, but also those who fell at Kandahar, and Omaha Beach, and Yargon, and Valley Forge. And they all fought for, this, for essentially the same purpose and the same liberties that we're exercising here today. And so, we have to take stock of that, both as a community and as a country. But this is not just about commemoration and remembrance, as important as, it is, as, this is, as that is. It's also about education. And so not only do I want to welcome the wall, but I also want to welcome the exhibits. This is a place to bring your kids, grandkids, school kids, to help learn about this country and, one, and what makes us so great and what will continue to allow this country to be the bedrock of freedom and liberty and self-government throughout the world. So welcome to Livingston County. I welcome this wall. I welcome all of you. I welcome the, the exhibits. Thank you. God bless you all. And God bless the United States of America. Someday I'll learn to speak like that. <laughs> In the meantime, I'd like to introduce somebody that is just very special. Um, this is a tremendous opportunity for us. It's a learning experience. We have a family here and a member of the family that's going to come up and they're going to tell you a story that you're not going to find in your books. You're not going to find it in your textbooks at school. Students, record it, take it back, share it. This is what this was all about. Bill Parm and his family and his father are the reasons that a lot of these gentlemen were out there and doing what they did. We want to thank them, and I am not going to take any of the thunder out of his speech because he has a speech that welcomes himself and his family, and he thanks all of you for what he's been able to do. Bill? All right. Well, I want to share a story about my father, Kim Fang Fa. 
He was the first lieutenant for the South Vietnamese Air Force, and he flew a C-130 Hercules. On April 3, 1975, he did the unthinkable. He believed if Saigon falls, if we were not the first to get out, we definitely won't be the second. With lots of prayer, my father stole a C-130 cargo plane from the Vietnamese Air Force and flew my family and 50 people out of Saigon to seek the freedom that would have been taken away from us. Please allow me to elaborate. The mission for that day was to fly a food resupply mission to Phan Rang. Instead, he somehow talked a co-pilot out of a mission to take his place so he can fly with his best friend and a sister squadron. It helped the co-pilot was looking forward to going to, on a date with a lady friend and was gladly <laughs> swapping out. During wartime, there was ration on fuel. Planes were filled with enough gas to get to their destination and refuel if they were able to get back. On that day, a crewman forgot and took an extended smoke break and filled the plane full of gas. When my father saw the tank was full, the crewman apologized and asked not to be reported. My father gave a stand up and told him not to do it again. My father unplugged the transponders, much like what's going on now, <laughs> and uh, radio communication uh, <coughs> to avoid detection and also told the crew that headquarters changed their mission to fly southeast to pick up these people instead. They flew at three top level and to avoid radar detection and made its way to a long time Air Force base, which was a U.S. Uh, abandoned Air Force base uh, in 1973. When they landed, they unloaded 20,000 pounds twice, and my dad informed the crew that he was commandeering the plane. The so Loadmaster quickly departed and was leaving the fashion to alert the local military authorities. About 50 people boarded the side door towards the nose of the plane while the supplies were being pushed out the cargo in the rear. During the chaos, a two-year-old child was trampled on while there was a mad rush onto the plane. It was reported that the mother dropped her infant on the tarmac to tend to her pale, lifeless daughter instead. Freedom is not free. Upon landing the plane, unloading the cargo, and loading 50 people, it took seven minutes. As the plane headed towards the runway, the military police came in their jeep and pointed an M79 grenade launcher towards the cockpit in order for the plane to stop. With a lot of gall, my father told his friend that he didn't think they would shoot. Sure enough, they didn't, and the plane took off. The plane made its way to Singapore. Upon landing, 50 plus refugees were detained in jail. Singapore notified the South Vietnamese government of the unscheduled arrival. Troops from South Vietnam were deployed to Singapore to bring these escapees back to try my father and his friend as war criminals. Day by day, no one came, and it was announced on April 30th, 1975, the capital city, Saigon, fell to the communist regime. Eventually, the U.S. took 50-plus crew members and passengers and as refugees to live in the land of the free, the United States of America. Eventually, the U.S. military took the C-130 cargo plane back and was utilized by Selfridge Air National Guard, which was about an hour away from here. And then the Smithsonian, uh, the Air and Space Museum, took possession of it when the plane retired. Currently, there are negotiations to have the plane restored and eventually put out on public display. Was it luck my family made here to the United States? Perhaps. With all the things that had to happen, I believe there was divine intervention. I'm not here just to share about my family's miraculous escape and to honor my father. Those were only pieces of the puzzle. As improbable as what the story may have sounded, 
there are some pieces of the puzzle that we're missing. Truthfully, this escape would not be possible if it were not the help of the United States Armed Forces. Let me explain. My dad attended language school in Lackland Air Force Base in 1969 and later received his flight and military training at Randolph and Keyser Air Force Base. Learning how to fly is a prerequisite to stealing a plane. <laughs> it was the U.S. troops who fought alongside South Vietnamese military to give our family the window of opportunity. It was the abandoned U.S. airstrip that was used as a launch pad for my family and many others escape. It was a U.S. military cargo plane, the C-130, that was used to fly my family and others to safety. It was the U.S. Air Force that escorted the 50-plus refugees from Singapore, the United States, to San Diego, Camp Pendleton Refugee Camp. The story would not be complete until I acknowledge the most important pieces of the puzzle. What are the missing pieces of the puzzle I left out of the story? They are the 59,318 names on that wall. Some people whose name on that wall probably didn't know what they were fighting for. I believe they fought for something great. They fought for freedom, not just for my family, but for thousands, hundreds of thousands of others who freed from communist rule. This freedom came at a steep price, their very own lives. I was raised in a Christian household. It's hard not to believe there is a God when we have such a unique family history. However, I wasn't always a believer. It was a struggle going to church, hearing about God's love when there's so much bloodshed in the world. Why, God? Why? I would continually ask why growing up. This is how he answered me. I read a verse once, and it was 1 John 3.16. It reads, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. With the help of Jesus, my Lord and Savior, he helped fulfill what was missing in my life. He reminded me of where I came from and the sacrifices it took to literally buy the freedom for my family and many others we have today. When I reflect on the Vietnam Veteran Memorial Wall, I see there are plenty of brave men and women who have sacrificed their lives for their brothers and sisters, even if they were strangers in a strange land like my family. Before I close, I want to introduce some people who are here with me today. First, my beautiful wife, a reminder of what love is. My eldest son, Calvin. Kim, his middle name is my father's name. He aspires to be a pilot just like his grandfather. Let's hope he doesn't have to steal a plane this time around. My son, Oliver Nam, his middle name means South. If we named him Oliver North, my parents would have disowned me. <laughs> my daughters, Larkin and Milai Me is their middle name. Me means beautiful, but it has a double meaning, America. When I look at them, beautiful America is what I see. Also, there was a mom whose two-year-old daughter was trampled and left to appear to be lifeless not me. Thankfully, her daughter was just knocked unconscious during the escape and alive and well today. She's with her youngest daughter, Rebecca, and her son. She was born here in Ohio and graduated from Ohio State, but we'll welcome her anyway. <laughs> I mentioned there was an infant that was left on the tarmac. That infant, we found out 30 years later, was picked up by his aunt. That infant is standing before you today, speaking. Aww. Last but not least, I want to introduce the first piece of the puzzle, my father, Kim Fong.
who have lost a loved one to be comforted, to be at peace, to know that each life was not lost in vain. I cannot speak for everyone, but I can speak for the Baum family. We thank those who have made sacrifices and then returned home. We thank those veterans who served side by side with other soldiers who were fortunate enough to come home. And thank the families who serve for raising outstanding men and women who hold the highest honor serving and defending freedom. For the greater part of my life, I took freedom for granted. It wasn't until a few years ago I attended my children's school event when they were honoring veterans during Veterans Day. I saw a gentleman across the auditorium wearing a Vietnam veteran hat. I made my way across. He was walking slowly. I stopped and introduced myself and said, hello, my name is Philip Baum. I'm Vietnamese. I want to thank you for fighting in our war. He reached out and grabbed me, gave me an embrace, whispered in my ear, no, thank you. We shared a moment before we left our separate ways. From that moment on, I saw the whole picture. So when I look at our past, where I came from, Vietnam, and seeing my father, who stole a C-130 cargo plane, realizing the United States who helped us, and yet the sacrifices that we see here behind a wall. So when we look at the whole picture, this is what I see. I want to thank the Disabled American Veterans Chapter 125 for inviting my family here. And I thank you all for listening. God bless America, and we are proud to be Americans.
Representing the Gold Star Mothers, Carol Johnson, Department of Michigan. Williamson County Commissioners, Don Parker. Michigan House of Representatives, 47th District, Dr. Hank Poffel. Michigan House of Representatives, 42nd District, Lana Thies. Livingston County Veterans of the Year, Charlie Brock, and Auxiliary Member of the Year, June Holly. Daughters of the American Revolution, Philip Livingston Chapter. Wright Area Chamber of Commerce, Pamela McConaughey. Town River Area Veteran, Don Lane and Chris Oates. American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary, 415 Heartland, Doug Coon and Annette Foreman. Commander and President of the Ann Arbor VA Health Center Systems, presenting, I'm sorry, the VA Health Systems of Ann Arbor is presenting a read. Native American Indians, uh, veterans, Southeast Michigan, representing Congressman Mike Bishop, Joe Riker, representing Senator De De Debbie Stabnow, Kaylee Fox, and the Cadet Pi Veterans Foundation, Paul DeShay. We will just give them a minute to get placed. We want to take a moment and see if anyone wishes to take some photos, and we'll have them return to their seats. As you're doing that, we'll have Sue Ashland come up and she can sing a great song. That's why we're trying to
everyone you meet May they'll be defended And never face defeat Don't forget All glory continues to wait For the land of the free Because of the brave Too many times our heroes have come home without a welcome. Too many times ignored, they walked alone. Too many times disrespected, or even disrespected. Not a still upon. This is, a, this is a surprise part of the show. What we'd like to do is have the Sam family come up, please. Seven members of the family. Hello. Can we have seven members of the Sam family come up, please? Bingley. Staying closer to the mic, Paul. Seven members of the family. During the Vietnam War, Livingston County had seven sons of Livingston County placed on the wall. Today we're going to read off their names. And I'm going to ask the Stamp family just to place their names at the base of the wall. Maurice Dane, Gregory, Michigan. William Diggs. Howell, Michigan. John M. Donahue, Gregory, Michigan. William M. Light, Pinckney, Michigan. James M. Loso, Pinckney, Michigan. 
Brent B. Naus Powell, Michigan. And last, Robert V. Simmons, Gregory, Michigan. The seven sons of Livingston County. Been written. The Book of Maine. 
the book of names, a very big one, 28,000 plus names, the names inscribed on this wall, the Livingston County names, 2,654 Michigan names, killed in action names, killed by hostile fire names, killed by friendly fire names, D-O-W-M-I-A names, the names of fathers, the names of sisters, the names of spouses, the names of siblings, the names of children, and the names of friends. A place of names on this panel, on that line, or read. William, James, Craig, Martin, Nathan, Marshall, Kendall. And some of this representative list that I'm about to read you heard just a few moments ago, and they're in your program, so I hope you will indulge me. Panel 27E, line 79. Maurice John Bain of Gregory, Michigan. Private First Class, United States Marine Corps. Born November 6, 1946. Killed in action October 9, 1967 in Kwangai Province, South Vietnam. Panel 18W, Line 88. William Franklin Diggs of Powell, Michigan. Specialist Fourth Class, United States Army, born April 28, 1947. Killed in action September 15, 1969, in Tainan Province, South Vietnam. Panel 21E, Line 83, James Michael Loso of Pinckney, Michigan. Private First Class, United States Army, born June 23, 1950, killed in action June 10, 1967, in Long An Province, South Vietnam. <coughs> Panel 22W, line 81, Craig Thomas. Of Novi, Michigan. Private First Class, United States Army. Born October 23, 1948. Killed in action November 12, 1970. In Kwangai Palace, South Vietnam. Panel 2E, Line 101. Martin John Masucci of Royal Oak, Michigan, Major, United States Air Force, born November 1st, 1939, missing in action, October 1st, 1965, near the Bontang staging area on Route 155 in North Vietnam. Panel 43W. Line 66, Nathan Ray Sale of Milford, Michigan, Private First Class, United States Army, born February 14, 1948, killed in action September 22, 1968, in Clonson Province, South Vietnam. E, line 20. Marshall Frederick Kippena of Calumet, Michigan. Staff Sergeant, United States Army. Born December 18, 1944. Missing in action July 14, 1966, in Abu Province, Laos. Remains identified on February 1st, 2018. 
burial in Arlington National Cemetery is pending. And last, Cal 31E, line 15, Kedwig Diane Orlowski of Camp County, Michigan, first lieutenant and a nurse in the United States Army, born April 13, 1944. Killed in action, November 30th, 1967, in Binh Province, South Vietnam. When this ceremony is finished, I urge you to look at that book of names. Go to the wall. Find a name that has a personal meaning for you. Find a name, any name. And as you look at that name, think about the little boy or girl who smiled all the time, who was a good student, or the bane of every teacher's existence, who had hopes and dreams and fears, who hung out on the corner, who worked the family farm, who sang in the church choir, who cut your grass, who loved your chocolate chip cookies, hated Brussels sauce, <laughs> who dated your sister, who broke your heart in high school, who volunteered, who was drafted, who died, who was taken prisoner, or who remained missing and unaccounted for. Every one of the 58,000 plus names on this wall is an American story. Everyone is an important story with a sad ending. Your presence here today marks the beginning of a time for remembering the people and for telling the story. I close my remarks today. with an excerpt from a letter written by a mother to her KIA son and left at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. Dear Bill, today is February 13, 1984. I came to this black wall again to see and touch your name. And as I do, I wonder if anyone ever stopped to realize that next to your name on this black wall is your mother's heart. A heart broken 15 years ago today when you lost your life in Vietnam. And as I look at your name, William Hartstock, I think of how many, many times I used to wonder how scared and homesick you must have been in that strange country called Vietnam. And if how it might have changed you, for you were the most happy-go-lucky kid in the world, hardly ever sad or unhappy. And until the day I die, I will see you as you laughed at me, even when I was very mad at you. And the next thing I knew, we were laughing together. They tell me the letters I write to you and leave here at this memorial are waking others up to the fact that there is still much pain left after all these years. And even now, there's still a lot of pain from the Vietnam War. But this I know. I would rather have had you for 21 years and all the pain that goes with losing you than to never have had you at all. Love, Mom. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States.
share the time for those that are here that are on this wall that aren't here. And celebrate for them the life they have lost, that they have spared, so you have the freedom and the life that you have right now. I'd also like to just mention a couple of activities and programs that are coming up over the next couple of days. Uh, we invite you back continuously to share in our programs, in our activities. Please share your stories. Share the stories with each other. We have a hospitality tent in the back. Sit there and chit chit chat with another veteran. It'll be so important to each and every one of you. It is all those two things that have already been mentioned. Why is he? God bless America. Secondly, it's an education tool. Take this home, take this education, share it, make people aware of the freedom that has been provided to people. Tomorrow night, we're honoring our first responders, any of those that are carrying a gun. And on the wall, there's eight nurses. There's 16 clergy. We are sharing them, and we are going to be sharing others, the medics, the performance, the women, the nurses, the doctors. Tomorrow is a day to celebrate their lives. So, tell the other day to come back. We'll be doing a ceremony at 6 30 tomorrow. We would like to share a hat and hear some of that event. During the day, we will have a lot of first responders on site. Many of them are veterans. Maybe not as the war this year, but as previous wars and past wars. The wars continue, unfortunately, but freedom we have in the country. On Saturday, we have a very special event. We have some very special things going on. We're doing an Agent Orange Awareness Day. That's that nasty, nasty pesticide that we spray all over the it has affected not only veterans that are there, it's affected it is our children, their children's children. Up to seven generations can be affected by that. We'll be doing and holding two special family sessions during that time. Those will be in over the EMS building, so we won't be in front of the wall when we do it. But we'll be able to share, we'll learn, we have professionals that will be here that know the history, they know the problems, they may help to find some of the answers. We'll also have some of our Congress people here, representatives will be here, so we can hope that they will carry this back and find additional ways to provide healing. But most importantly, on Saturday night, we're going to do a special birth service. And we're going to honor those who can make it home, those clergy. We're going to be setting the luminaries for you. If you'd like to come back at 9 o'clock and share with the setting of the luminaries, here is just a little prayer time. It's not going to be sermon, just an opportunity to share. We're going to announce the name for each of these people. We're going to say a prayer for each one, violent or out loud. So we're going to give them something like that to help them. Those clergy never carried a gun. Two of them received silver stars. They carried he died very And on Sunday, we have our closing ceremony at 2 o'clock. We're going to honor the Gold Star Mom, the Blue Star Mom, the people that are here because they've lost some of their family. We're also going to honor the women in the military. Again, so many, so often it's forgotten that we have ladies that are out there, young ladies, daughters, daughters of God, grandmothers. They're out there doing the same diligent tasks that the men do. We want to recognize them. We're hoping we have a lot of them here so we can help to celebrate that and again to share that with everyone. Um, the wall will remain open. We'll be here 24 hours a day. You can come back day or night. We'll have people here to assist you. You can assist with finding any name that you want. Any of the 58,000. 318 names, we have people here that can help you find them. So if you're looking for a special person, 
if you don't have a special person, but you want to make a special friend, take the time, do the guessing, take it home. And after you get home, go to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial site. You can try and picture, you can try and face those that do what an excellent opportunity to be able to take that to your classroom to share. I can see a bunch of A one two people that never thought that they would see one. A lot of schools are going to be here. We have schools that are coming. We do offer tours for groups. If any of you have a group that wants to come back tomorrow, we'll start tours at 10 o'clock. We do each school takes about 30 minutes. We give you a special educational tour of the educational exhibit and the law. This is all done with our uh, people from Washington. The men and women that are out here. So it gives you a little extra insight and what have that. Those of you that are having difficult times, we have the therapy dogs here. Sarah Claus is here. They're able to help you. We have anywhere from 1 to 17 clergy on site all the time to help you. We're here to pray with you to help you. Uh, I'd also like to ask one favor. If each of you would take the time, before you leave, we have three flags that we place representing the Vietnam Memorial Wall. We ask that you leave a message. It can be a message of thanks. It can be only your name. So please take a moment, find one or all, sign those flags for us. We want to be able to keep this memory alive with this event. So it's something else that we want to share. So please take a moment. There's one in front of each of the three tents. And take just a moment to leave a, leave a message, a message that we need to trust you. And if you use the message you had before you got here, but take that message and share it. At this time, I'd like to uh, bring Chaplain Ramallis up again to issue the benediction. And following the benediction, we will have caps. And after that, we will be closing. You're welcome again to share. Chair of the Tom family will be here to help you share some of their other memories. I heard that Mr. Tom has just a, a very, very good horror story. A lot of stories that weren't told. I know Phil has one. The first one is the fact that when he was four months old, he doesn't remember that he missed the plane. <laughs> it's something again, and it's one of these miracles. You've heard a miracle story tonight, so please take it and share it. For our benediction, please. Chaplain. The veterans are only on cover duty for that. Let us go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to your service, O Lord. Let us hold fast to that which is good, render no man evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the needy and the afflicted, honor all men. Let us love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of His Spirit. And may God's blessing be upon us and remain with us always. God bless and thank you, and thank our Vietnam Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this event. One last thing. Please, if you see a name on the back of the flyer, the people that have helped to make this possible have brought this wall here. Please don't hesitate, don't hesitate to thank them as well. Visit them at their business. Let them see them on Facebook or whatever. It's not a new tutorial, but without those people, this wouldn't be possible. So again, please don't hesitate to share that. Thank you. Please share the wall.